On the edge of the Arctic Circle, hidden away amongst the Swedish pines, a couple of Soviet-era ground-to-air missile systems sit, waiting for the Allies to take to the skies. This is the Threat Emitter Team, a unit from RAF Spade Adam in Cumbria, here playing the enemy on the ground in the high north. I'm Corporal Mike Aiken. I am uh, based at RAF Spade Adam. I've been there 20 years and uh, my job is operating and maintaining Cold War era surface to air missile systems. Corporal Aitken and his team have taken their SA-6 and SA-8 all over the world, preparing militaries for a Soviet-style aggressor. So uh, an SA-6 would have a three-man crew. Uh, you'd have a driver in the front seat, then the two rear seats, you'd have what, what we call uh, acquisition, which is on the left-hand side, which initially finds the, tar finds the aircraft, and on the right side, you'd have what we call uh, range elevation, and their job is to actually track the aircraft at the final stage, and he would also have launch control to, to fire the missile. The dish at the back first detects the aircraft, then the dish at the front is pointed towards it. It locks onto the target and tracks it. The SA-6 would normally deploy alongside another tracked vehicle that would carry six surface-to-air missiles. Once the SA-6 detects and locks onto an aircraft, it sends a radio signal to this second vehicle that would launch a missile up to a range of 22 kilometers. The tanks were originally East German. Then, when Germany reunified, United Germany lent them to the UK and the US to help train their pilots. For Exercise Arctic Challenge, there are about 10 of these systems spread out across northern Sweden, operated by the British, the Americans and the Germans, working together to play the aggressor. There's a wealth of experience and knowledge here, shared between nations. I was trained in the East German Armed Forces 30 years ago, and I know, uh, use this knowledge and additional information we get from our inter how the systems are used nowadays in enemy countries. And we try to replicate these tactics for the training of our pilots. Right, so it's similar to a so that, Nissan Micra. This, it's a clutch, <laughs> your brake and the accelerator. So basically you press the on button there. And then you push these two together. Press start. Put your foot in the accelerator. That one? That one. Very, very agricultural to drive these things, they're very robust. We don't often get to drive too far, but out here it's a, we can drive like five, ten kilometres which is through, the, through the Swedish countryside, which is very different for us, so that's going to be quite interesting. It's, it's always uh, fun to be the bad one, because you know you have to defeat your uh, country, and at the end of the day you always die. Do the bad guys always die? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Ably assisted by my rear-view mirror, called Craig, I successfully managed to reverse park. Possibly my finest achievement. This is the SA-8. This is the other system we operate and maintain at RAF Spade Adam. In contrast to the SA-6, this is a short to medium range system, mainly used against helicopters and slow moving uh, targets, such as transport aircraft. If you look at the two, uh, with the middle panel, that, that's what we call a tracker radar. So that, that's the one that's aimed at the target and will follow the target. And the two little side panels, they're the missile guidance systems, which will launch the missile and guide it onto the aircraft. Allegedly it is amphibious, we wouldn't like to try it ourselves, but uh, it was built to be, be, be amphibious and highly mobile. It can operate on the move, so therefore making it hard to, to, for the aircraft to actually tra track and d destroy. What would happen normally is the SA-6 would be deployed and the SA-8 would be deployed around the SA-6 to sort of protect the, main, the SA-6 as these are mobile and, and hard, to, like I say, hard to track, hard to find for the aircraft. So that, that, this is the SA's main role, is to protect the SA-6. It's hard to explain, but you get the feel of them and you get, understand the noises and the, all the indications about how they're working. And every day is different with them. It's like 1950s, 1960s technology. So one day it'll work fine, the next day it'll be broken and it'll start working again. The Russians create so many switches. You'll find one switch that'll be flicked up and everything stops working and you're thinking, what, what, was it, what did that switch actually do? So yeah. Spring arrived late this year to Sweden, and the areas they'd planned to locate the tanks for the exercise were still deep in snow, giving them added logistical challenges. Our liaison officers were literally knocking on people's doors, asking would they mind if we stick a Soviet-era missile system in their garden, and they were, they were quite happy to do it. 
they do seem very appreciative of being here and, and, re and are really helpful. We're a bit of a rarity, a very, very unique job in the Air Force. You'd like to think it is important. There's still a very current threat. There's still a lot of countries still use them very operationally. And, you know, it could always come a time when, when one of our aircrew might come up against one. And uh, hopefully the skills they've developed at Spade Adam or up here in northern Sweden will help them evade uh, detection. Hannah King, Forces News in Sweden. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.